From the Sundance Film Festival, fresh off the first day, the film Coda came out to a rapturous applause and reception, whether the uh, applause was heard or online. There, there was people rooting for this movie from mm-hmm. the start. As a Coda child of deaf adults, Ruby is the only hearing person in her deaf family. And when the family's fishing business is threatened, Ruby finds herself torn between pursuing her love of music and her fear of abandoning her parents. The film stars Amelia Jones, Eugenio Derbez, Troy Kotzer, Ferdia walsh Pilo, Daniel Durant, and Marley Matlin. Amanda, start us off. What were your impressions of Coda? I just immediately thought it was, it just, it was one of those, it, my, my heart felt full when I finished watching Coda. And I had seen some, some like screeners ahead of time, but that was like my first official Sundance watch. And to start it off with something that just made you feel so good, it was mm-hmm. just nice. Like in a lot of ways, it hits so many of the same beats that you've gotten from these kind of like family dynamic coming of age type stories. But mm-hmm. that take, that unique side of it dealing with a family where you're the only hearing member of your family really elevate it in a way that uh, takes it to be something more. And I'm not saying it's perfect and I'm not saying that some of it doesn't fall into those tropes that you see a lot in these types of movies, but because it had so much heart, it like surpasses all of that. Like I was instantly able, like none of that stuff even bothered me the way that I might notice it in another movie because it just sold it so well. It was so well balanced i found in in what it did but and and like the performances were great like Mm -hmm. it was cute it was just cute and heartwarming i really liked uh emilia jones because i had no idea that she she learned sign language for the film and i was like okay that's dope you know and they had uh codas themselves who were on set making sure that you know they were able to interpret everything because you got to take into account like you can't yell cut if the director cannot be seen or her lips cannot yeah. be heard. Mm-hmm. So it's like that whole dynamic of how they filmed the movie, I think is interesting. I had no idea. The main lead didn't even know how to sing. Or I don't want to say not know how to sing because clearly she can. That's a big aspect of the movie. Yeah. And she took singing lessons for the first time leading up to it. So yeah. performance wise, fantastic job. I know Zach had noted how in the in, uh, the interviews for it, the mama got the, the Oscar in the back reminding <laughs> you that this isn't her first time out here. This is just the first time that people are paying attention. Yeah. I think it succeeded at at being that movie. Okay, I will have you know, I know her from the L word, so I know who she is. (laughs) Instantly All right. recognized I, her. She, Marley Matlin is an accomplished actress. She I really is. like her on The West Wing. Yep. Uh, she came West back Wing. for that revival they did on HBO Max. But yeah, she's. I, I saw some people on Twitter even saying that she, there's a chance she's going to be in the running for Best Supporting Actress. I think so. For, for this movie. I don't know about that, and I don't want to project quite mm-hmm. so far ahead to next year's yeah. award season. But this is a really great showcase for its actors. You mentioned Amelia Jones in particular. I think this is a huge star-making performance for her. Just uh, an absolute like light at the center of this movie you mentioned that she sings in the movie and she signs in the movie to be able to navigate that uh in between of doing the sign language and also the the actual spoken performance i think is is so uh captivating here uh, and and it's got a really fun cast all around her family i think is great troy kotzer as kind of the the dad joke Papa deaf Frank. dad in this movie is yeah. so lovable And I think, you know, you mentioned the heart. That's really the thing that carries through this movie. I think it's got, as you mentioned, a lot of these sort of indie movie cliches and and tropes of maybe kind of a a very typical coming of age story. And, you know, there's moments where the humor is a little bit cheesy that in kind of like an eye roll worthy way, but then it'll go straight from that into this really beautiful, authentic depiction of navigating life uh, being the conduit between the speaking world and your parents, mm-hmm. the 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 burden placed on this character, uh, and and you'll be reminded that this is really a unique film in a lot of ways. That this type of story hasn't been told, even if the tone might mm-hmm. be familiar, the content actually isn't. And uh, I guess I guess that's credit due to Sean Heater, the writer director here, who I, I think gives you a very lived in. Uh, lived in world Mm -hmm. for this movie. It's also a remake. I'm not sure how many people know about that, but it is a remake of a French film, which was more of a comedy film. And then when they picked it up, uh, I know like Eugenio, because this is by uh, Path 
picks. He wanted to make it more of a drama, even though he is more of the comedian. So definitely this movie's going to hit a lot of people. It already got picked up for the record breaking. Uh, I, I, I know it was Tim Cook. Or Tim Cook, uh, t- Tim Apple. He had said he only picks specific movies that he would pay for his. Uh, he would play for his family. This would be one of them. Twenty five million dollars. Uh, yeah, a new Sundance record, smashing lot, yeah. the uh, Palm Springs record from last year. I, I don't know, Amanda. What do you think? Is this an overpay for Coda? See, I don't know. I'm not, (laughs) you know, it's a lot. I I feel like the reason why this got pushed so high is that there was a bidding war behind the scenes Mm because like there was a lot of places where this would have felt very comfortable and this would have done really well in a theater, in a world where theaters were still a thing Mm -hmm. that was a little bit more relevant Mm -hmm. right now. But uh, I think it's also worth remembering, we just mentioned uh, Palm Springs was the previous record holder and for Hulu seems to say that that was their most popular streamed movie ever at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, do you think that Coda can become that kind of movie for Apple TV plus? No, because no one likes Apple TV plus. <laughs> so <laughs> let me add to that with Palm Springs, they had picked that up for theaters. Then yeah. it had to go to Hulu. Right. We still don't know the cost of a stream because they don't want to tell us, yeah. but we know what they're dropping. And this is one that's going to go straight to Apple TV plus. I don't know if y'all got the email. Apple TV Plus said, here's another six months for free. I got that email yesterday. Oh, wow. Pretty much extending everybody's uh, free trial, which I don't know who does that. They're doing it. They're saying they'll discount it off of whatever you're paying. If you're paying $25 million for the movie, that means that there is a market there for streaming. Because be. going into this Sundance, a big thing was like, are people going to be making sales if it's we don't know? about theaters so this is telling me that they have figured stuff behind the scenes on uh, how they're going to be able to make their money back and i think that they're really targeting in making this more of a a family all-around movie for people to watch on apple and i think that they're gearing up for like a really big summer of releases yeah on the on the other hand so for example they bought hulu bought palm springs hulu doesn't exist in canada so it wasn't available here for a while then they did a licensing deal so it's available on amazon prime Mm mm-hmm so I'm assuming that that might something like that might happen with Apple TV as well. A lot of cross deals. I There's going to be some this cross been, stuff where they might license things. Could have been so great like, on Prime. For example, Crave gets stuff from HBO Max in Canada okay. because we don't have HBO Max. So I I would assume that there might be some different licensing deals that go on there down the road. <laughs> like obviously, first if you have Apple, you're getting it exclusive. You get it from you're there, getting yeah. it first. You're getting it the best. But then down the road, they can make more licensing deals to make this available other places. Make it rentable. Right stuff like that purchasable Mm -hmm. so i think they'll do a good job with it and i think part of the reason they spend all this money isn't just because they think necessarily this is going to be uh this huge driver of views but because they're trying to to make a statement that apple tv is going to be this destination for movies like this they've been trying uh, you know (laughs) big player that maybe if this is a film that for whatever reason does end up in the Oscars conversation although I I am a little bit skeptical about its ability to to really last through award season but if it does then this is a huge win for Apple mm-hmm. TV True. and puts them into the into the conversation along with you know their forthcoming crazy expensive Martin Scorsese film I think in a lot of ways they are overpaying specifically I think so to too. to show that they are on the same playing field as the Netflixes and the Hulus and the whatever's now. I can agree with that well, for sure. Maybe we're realizing it's not overpaying. If they're all overpaying, at what point does that actually become the normal price the normal that we're price. paying for these services? But I'm excited for it. I think it's a cute movie overall. It I think is. it's gonna be perfect for streaming. I do think it's cliche, like Zach had said. It, it's a if you've ever been a kid who's translated for your parents, uh, like my mom was, and I know a lot of my peers are for their families, you you see that struggle of what she faces in this mm-hmm. movie, and I think that that's the cute aspect of it. It's definitely going to be driving you know forward the idea of you know, without spoiling it, really getting you into that that uh, state of mind that they go through. Like Sound of Metal, which we hyped up a lot last mm. year. This so this good. has similar elements to it, and I think it's just showcasing the idea that you make better versions of this story the more that you actually have actors and filmmakers who are actually deaf being able to come in uh and have a say so absolutely for for me in art i don't know if either of us thought this was the the best film we've seen thus far in a man in in sundance i know amanda it's closer to the top of her list but i do think this is gonna be the film from this year's sundance that gets the most widely acclaimed that the most people who see it really love mm-hmm. it's the one that you know my girlfriend's parents I was gonna say, uh, seemed interested this in this is the one i'm gonna be able to be like hey mom and dad want to watch a movie and my dad will fall asleep and my mom will be like that was cute <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly you know? 
<laughs> so in its way, that that does make it one of the real, real standouts of this festival. Mm. So hopefully it's going to be something that people get to see soon since Apple splashed all that money. But uh, mm-hmm. I guess we'll find out. And yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a delightful movie, even for its cliches and maybe familiar aspects. There's just so much stuff here that is genuinely novel and mm-hmm. and genuinely uh, fun. Uh, I, I think some of the interactions uh, where you get into the nuances of the humor in translating or in failing to translate without spoiling it, the early doctor scene, mm-hmm. it does a great job of <laughs> showing you that burden that she goes under, but also yeah. how it's kind of a funny situation. Uh, it, it just... It feels it feels really uh, smart about the situation in a way that uh, it makes it very watchable. It cares. Yep. Yeah. 